Greetings! Today I have one special video for you, and it's uh, not in a positive light. You know, I'm uh, extremely passionate and enthusiastic about Supermemo, but Supermemo is because of incremental reading, learning, and free learning, all of this. And this software is implementing this paradigm. That's why I like it. But as you know, there are so many limitations in Supermemo. So it led to that at least a fraction of what he do. In this case, it's a branch. I will stop using Super Memo for it. Yep, you heard that right. I choose, in this case, Anki, which is what I used in the past uh, for the same thing, actually. But I'm not making this decision because, on you know what, I'm bored or whatever. I have been carrying out an A-B test. It's all, let me import this from XML, from my Anki deck into Super Memo. Let me create these are the siblings of what will be cards of the same note and the note would be um, a topic. But what happened is that, as I was suspecting, this is true too much a semantic by nature. But not only that, there are so many limitations that I tried to come across using conventions. Now I'm using Anki. And as you can see, it's nothing new. Look at the creation date. 2014. It's been eight years. And if I look, let me see. So there are many reasons to use Anki. First, refractoring. Second, search. Third, I will call it data database that I could have more content than what I'm displaying in the card. And fourth, uh, convenience. So this is one example that I can think of. That super memo, it's not always the best thing, the best approach. I know I will be making more repetitions than if I was doing this in super memo. Let me switch again. Okay, this is one example. So I'm be, I'm using two mnemonic systems here. The Mar Marilyn Monroe method, specifically for learning Hanzi, the Chinese characters, and the Heisig method which is or originally for learning Japanese kanji, but can be used, uh, uh, there's a version for Chinese as well. So I'm using person and location, then a keyword and so on. So I have to use mnemonics. So without going to further detail, what I want to do is exemplify. I know it's a very niche um, example, if you're not interested in Chinese at all, I will still um, suggest this example because it's one genuine and real example. And for me, it is a no-brainer. I did an A and B test in Super Memo and in, in Anki. And I mean, I mean, Super Memo is not a good fit at all for this. But keep in mind this is something out of the norm, it's an outlier, uh, and extremely asemantic ah, in nature. That's the key. There's the incremental reading here. It's a semantic by nature, it's language, um, it's symbolic, in this case it's a ideogram, and I'm using made-up mnemonics. I decided that ba, in this case, since it's the first tone, you will see in the hover, B. If that's with B, that's Britney Spears. And then I have here, A1. That means if ends with A first tone. That's what I use for recalling this. So with this mnemonic, I will able to know that this means, what well, I know what it means. It means eight, and it's, using, it's used here. For me, it's the best approach just for this specifically Chinese characters and nothing else. I won't do it in any other kind of situation. Then, before going to in detail, in depth, for every reason, there will be a chapter for every one of those. Let me thank you, one of my patrons, Mr. T. He has been a patron for 10 months, slightly overdue. He's, in, he's on the free learner tire. That means he's getting a call with me every month. So thank you for your support, Mr. T. Uh, that will help putting more time on this channel and every channel, the pleasure learning without the super memo. 
And also one donation that I forgot, a fan from SM Wiki Discord. So thank you, Anonymous. I don't know who that is. I help so many people into the Discord channel. So uh, a modest and long overview. Well, I, I will say the same. My thank you, it's overview as well. No, no pun intended. A modest and long overview token for of appreciation for all the great con content you have been putting out. Thank you. This takes lots of time, lots of effort that I have been doing for free on my free time for more than 200 videos. And I, as you have noticed recently, there are less videos. That's because I'm busier with real life and it is what it is. I don't have financial support, so I have to do what's giving me the bills paid before. Then, Dung Mai, it was not a donation, it was a tutoring service. But that is because when there's no PayPal and the currency is not supported, I use the coffee. So let's go back. Uh, let me start with refractoring. So I have all of these siblings because I cheated my way to achieve that. I use XML. Why I can do that? First, it is a pre-selected finite list of Hanzi I want to learn. So I know what I will be learning. It's not that I will, I just learn on to go. I, I know. Then I generate one. It's just recalling the meaning, eight. And the other is for recalling the reading. As you can see, I'm using conventions. R, reading, key, keyword. And it's a keyword. Sorry, I, I slipped. I did, I said meaning. Not necessarily, because some Hanzi doesn't have a meaning known, or the meanings are so overlapping that you have to decide a different word because it, it's being used and the key has to be unique. So let's see, I, I made this. It's okay, I have done this only on this item. And this is, by the way, that's my convention to know that's a mnemonic. In case I do a search for, for incremental reading or language, that I don't want these examples to be filtered. Then what I will need to do is, oh, let me go to the other element and type it here. Oh, let's see that I made a mistake and it's not reflected on the other side. So I will have to do the same thing, copy and paste, copy and paste. Not a deal breaker yet, but mm, it, it is adding a friction. Second, the search. I have my conventions, so I know this is unique for this method. So only this branch will have this convention. Now the question is, how can I look for Hansi that I covered or not? So let's say that I'm, I have other branches in, in Chinese. And let's see that is, hmm, I don't remember this. Let's say this one, I don't know this one, for instance, but I don't remember because I haven't learned it yet. I have no item for it. Or it's because it is and I have forgot it. Forgot it. So yes, I could search, do this, then copy and paste. Copy. Bam. And if I'm consistent with just one space and so on, so I will have to put this, okay. Now it's with the same thing, the same character. Look for the reading or the, the keyword. I could do this or two searches. I do the search with the reading, doesn't exist. Oh, let me just do the keyword, right? Okay, it doesn't exist. Now I will create it. But if I want to create it, is where do I do? In any place or in a specific place on the knowledge tree? I can use concepts and so on, but it's too cumbersome already. I invested too, too much time. It, it's in my clipboard, so I will use the exact same. Oh yeah, it's, in, it's here. Collection wise, but let's see what happens. Okay, it appears more than once. Why? Because it appears itself, perhaps it's too small, the, um, the size, but it's used as a component. Ah, it's, actually it's not the first one. It, it has a component. Look, is this the square, is mouth, and the one I'm looking for. 
So look at that. I can really search uh, for all the characters that are using this as a component. And I could filter as many as I want to appear in HASIC, traditional, simplified, uh, Japanese, or in Taiwan, by Q. I could select anything. It's, oh, I don't want anything. I want to be the literal. That's what I will do. Literal. Boom. And here you go. I have the other, I have a lot of information that will be never be displayed, but it's there. I'm using Anki as some sort of um, database. And with this information, I will make decision. But you can see how quickly it is to search and to, and to find similar, similar cards, related cards. Third, or say, I don't forgot um, the can already. Duplicates. I haven't mentioned that. So I have this here. Oh, it's a duplicate. I already have this in my collection. Or not, not just in my collection. In my collection, but for Unihan. So for remembering the meaning and uh, reading. That doesn't that is not language learning, by the way. That's why I I instead of I just said meaning, I it is keyword. Because I will still use super memo for reading. Uh, I mean, for learning the language. Okay, this is very simple. I go and so on because I, I'm a noob. But what will happen is that sometimes, later on, I will use close relations. Let's say that's a close relation of this character. And I will have, I will do this when the same character has two meanings and the pronunciation also differs. One meaning has one pronunciation and so on. So you need context, because Chinese is a highly contextual language. You really rely on the context. So even if it's one character, it's, oh, you know, I have one flashcard about this. Yes, but not as a word. It's just as a, an abstract entity, call it Unihand. And Unihand, sorry, Unihand, and that Unihand could be an instance in Chinese or in Japanese, or in Korean, in Hancha, or anything at the same time. That's why I don't call it Hanzi, per se. So I will still do the language learning here. What I will not do is the Heisig method with Marilyn Monroe method. I will be using Anki. Nice. So I can see duplicates. I can search and filter extremely quick. And I can do whatever with the information I have. Name of the field breath or real expression, and this. So look at that. Now I have all the results that appears, that part of the component is this. How cool is that? And I can filter by the radical or if it's just found, for instance, this is extremely obscure. What that's itself, uh, over here, okay. Bamboo shoot. So this is one example. So I could search not only real expression, but HTML. Let's go again. Look at that, how easy it is to pinpoint anything. Nice. So that's the mnemonic I used in the past, in 2014, I'm assuming. I'm using HTML. So for instance, casa means home or house. Um, if I will look this, I could have so many false positives in the search. So even if I have a standalone collection for Super Memo to avoid um, false positives in the searches, I could have these in many different places of mnemonics on the body of the of the story that is not meant to be as a an, as a key word, right? So I can look for the actual HTML. I'm using custom tags. How cool is that? So I can see all the characters that contain this, the place, or just the person, since I'm using person location mnemonics, Bruce Lee as a mnemonic, and filter that. It's so easy so and so convenient to do. And later on, next layer, next motif, because I, don't, I lost the count. I can have this automatically done. I don't have to 
duplicate, look for that element, duplicate it, change the wording, and so on. In that case, as soon as I fill my own keyword, this card will get uh, created. And with the cover right, I can decide where. I have few decks, but the decks are because every deck has a different uh, deck settings. See, so this is automatically done. And then, for instance, reading. It's first I need my own key and then add a reading to create. I have two criteria to meet to create this. Second layer is that I have more information that I need to, and it's not displayed. And what will happen with Super Memo? If we both go back here, it's okay. Every time here, I have to go here, link, registry member, na na na. When it's done once, then I can duplicate, but all, just to recap, all the edits will be just into this element. They don't propagate of the siblings. The search will be so cumbersome to do, so long, so long term. All the time I will be investing, uh, searching and waiting for the search to take, take place and all of this it will be more than the time I waste making more repetitions in Anki because the algorithm is not that good. And the more deep I go, the more advanced I will go, the more searches I will need to do. So the more cumbersome to use Super Memo will get. And this is the only exceptions I can think of. The new characters I came across of reading, I will be doing those in Anki. They are already in Anki. I will just fill my keys, my key and so on, and this will generate the, the cards already on the place I want to, with the settings I want to, and so on. Here, I will have, if I really want, I will have to search and make the duplicate. Let's see that. Let's let's say it's that. Then adapt this. Bam, 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 bam. Or if I don't care about uh, three, I will do it in any place I have. But if I do that, I just do, for instance, a uh, concept. I am. I just do use the hook. I will flatten the hierarchy. So long story short, what I will lose is track of what I have. So I will be a slave of the search functionality. I will have to do this every time I want to look for. It's so inefficient. So I prefer to do more reps. And what do I lose? A better algorithm? Yes. And interleaving. But what happens since I did the A-B test for a while is that, oh man, I didn't want to do this now. So it breaks the flow, the flow because it's so semantic, so made up that when I'm really focused on incremental reading, I'm not in the mood for this. So I will then do a subset. Or if I don't do a subset, I will have, I will be forced to do a subset or this will show up. So what, unless I do a very, and now I lost the priority because I, ha I have this misstep thing. But the priority was kind of quite high. So what do, uh, then I will need to do? A standalone collection for it. But if I do that, I will be losing interleaving. So what's the point? What do I gain for using Super Memo to begin with? Just doing less repetitions at the cost of so many inefficient and primitive searches and all over the place, nah, 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 absolutely not worth it. So if you make this, if you watch all the video until here, in case you don't know the language in particular, I hope it's still meaningful as an example, because what is best, what at the end of the day, it's free learning. It's your land drive. So if the software is limiting this or creating friction, that it's no longer enjoyable, pleasurable, move on as I did. I use Anki. That's my selected choice. It could be a, any other thing. I'm just sharing my own experience. Let me know your thoughts if you want to share. And nothing more to add today. See you next time.